Hi, um, today I'm going to go over a simple problem that is, well, it's deceptively simple. Really, it's pretty difficult um, if you go all the way down the rabbit hole. But um, yeah, so let me start. So just to give a quick overview of the problem, here it is. Given a sequence of fair coin flip results, so fair meaning that the coin is equally likely to land on heads and tails, um, we want to find the expected number of flips that we have to do before that sequence is seen. So as an example, say we have some sequence heads, tails, heads, then the question would be how many times we expect to flip the coin before we see that exact sequence pop up. So intuitively, the coin is fair, so okay, maybe the probabilities will just be the same for all the sequences of that given length, right? So. For heads, tails, and tails, tails, maybe those will be the same, you know, expected number of steps before we see them because, okay, well, heads and tails, that's like 25% probability, right? And then tails and tails, that's also 25% probability. So you'd think, okay, well, maybe, maybe, maybe we expect to see them after the same number of coin flips. So we'll test the accuracy of this claim using a simple Python script. So here we just import random. We've got some fair coin that returns heads if uh, our random uh, variable is less than 0.5, and otherwise it returns tails. Um, and then we have this steps to sequence function where we pass our random variable in. Um, we have our outputs. And while the output does not end in our sequence, we're going to keep flipping coins. Um, and then we just return the number of times that we had to flip coins to get that output, so the length of the output string. And here we just have a helper function to run our steps to sequence function a certain number of times, and then divide that by the total number of times that we ran in order to get the average, basically the average number of steps, right? So that's going to be an approximation for the expected number of steps. Um, before we see the sequence in general. So here are the results. And uh, clearly these are not the same, right? So heads, tails is much more, I guess, easy to get, right? So the number of steps that we have to take, the number of times we have to flip the coin in order to, um, in order to see the sequence is much lower at, at about four, right? than the number of times that we have to flip the coin in order to see tails tails, which is about six. So this is different than what we expected. So let's go into why that's the case. So a good way to model this kind of problem is using a state machine, um, where the states are basically what we've seen so far. And you know, with, with regard to the sequence that we want to see. So say we're at the start state, we haven't flipped anything yet. If you flip a tails, we haven't made any progress towards our goal, so we just stay in the start state. If you flip a heads, then we go to the h state. So we've seen a heads that's part of our part of our goal. And from here, if you flip a tails, then we want to go to heads tails. Then we're, we've succeeded or successful, right? We got exactly what we wanted to get. If you flip another heads, we just stay in the h state, right? So we flip a, a heads, you know, again, we're back here. Nothing has changed. Um, if we get another tails, we can still, we still get to our HT goal. Um, and this, with the probabilities along these transitions like this, this is called um, a discrete time Markov chain. You don't have to worry about that for now. It's just, or just at all in this video, um, it's just a name for this kind of probabilistic state machine. So now let's look at the state machine for tails tails, right? So here at the start, if we flip ahead, nothing happens. We stay here. Right? If we have a tail, then we get to go to the tail state where we've seen one tail. All right. But if we flip a head here, we actually have to go back to the start because now we, are, we completely lost our progress. Right? Um, we still need to flip two tails in a row now in order to get to tails, tails. If we have another tail, um, then we actually get to tails, tails immediately. So yeah, that's, this is why this is the state machine. And you, you'll notice the difference between this state machine and this state machine, right? Here, we never go backwards. We never lose our progress. Here, we actually do lose our progress if we get the wrong, you could call it the wrong coin flip, right? So it, it should be a bit more intuitive as to why 
it on average takes longer for us to see tails tails than for us to see heads tails. Okay, so now let's talk about actually solving for the, um, the expected amount of time. So here we have this intuitive understanding of why it would take longer for us to see tails tails than heads tails. Um, but now all we have is like, okay, a comparison between this. We don't actually know what the expected number of steps is unless we want to simulate it, right? So we don't want to simulate it. We want to find out exactly what it is, even though we have a pretty good idea. Like, yes, this is going to be four steps. Yes, this is going to be six steps. So we can actually solve a system of linear equations to figure out what the expected number of steps is before we see the desired result. So for instance, for heads tails for the state machine that we had before, um, the expected value, this is what this E means, is expected value. Um, you could even say like expected number of steps, right? Or expected number of flips. Um, from our start state, well, we have to add one, right? And then there's a 50% chance that we go to the head state and a 50% chance that we stay in the start state, right? So if we flip ahead, we go to the head state. We flip the tails and we stay in the start state. So that's what this first equation means. The second equation is for what happens when we're in the head state. Well, we have to add one because we're taking another step, right? And then here, there's a 50% chance that we stay in the head state. If we flip the head, then we stay here. And if we flip the tail, then we go to the, finish, the, the final state, right? The finishing state. And here, the expected number of steps between the finishing state and the finishing state is, of course, zero. So this is just kind of like, you know, we could have put the zero here, but um, this is kind of just to make things a little bit more understandable. All right, so now we'd want to solve this equation, uh, this series of equations, um, to get the result. And here, we just start out by, um, you know, we have expected value of heads. Well, we plug our zero in here for HT. And then this is pretty easily solvable. And you can kind of just look through this if you want. Um, so as our simulation indicated, the expected number of steps before heads tails is seen is four. Um, so this is what we expected. It was, you know, 3.99 whatever in our simulation, but um, basically four. And here we've proven that that is correct. Um, and as an exercise, if you want to do the same thing for the tails tails state machine to confirm the expected number of steps is actually six, like our simulation indicated, feel free to do that as well. So solving systems of equations is a pain, right? Uh, it took a while to set this up um, and maybe to solve it. Uh, it's just kind of some manual work that we want to get rid of. So luckily, there's actually a formula that we can use um, to do this stuff for us. So we can we have our state machines, right? We can rewrite them as a transition matrix. So this state machine here, remember from heads tails, becomes this transition matrix. Um, the transition matrix, you can think of it like this, right? So we have our states kind of along the rows and also along the columns. So the rows represent the state that we're going from, and the columns represent the state that we're going to. So this row, this top row, would be the start row. And this first column would be the start column. So the chance of going from start to start is 0 0.5, right? The chance of going from start to, and this would be the heads column, start to heads, 0 0.5, and then start to heads tails, 0. Right, so this basically lines up exactly with the uh, the state machine. You can just confirm that the rest is also makes sense, right? So, for instance, like heads tails to go from heads tails to heads tails is one. To go from heads to heads tails is zero point five, etc. So our transition our, our transition matrix has a specific form, right? It looks like Q R zero and one. So basically, it means if you look at this, right? You can think of these four entries with these four entries in this box over here as being Q, which is like a sub matrix. And then over here we have R, it's like another sub matrix, or you can think of it as a vector. And then on the bottom we have zeros. And then over here we have one, right? So in the terminology of Markov chains, this is our absorbing state. Um, and then this is like our substochastic matrix of transient states. But again, like don't worry about the terminology too much. So you can immediately get all the expected numbers of states, um, sorry, steps from the non-final states. So that's um, like, that would be start and H in this circumstance to the final state, that's HT, right? Our absorbing state by using this formula where I is the identity matrix and one is just a vector filled with one. So 
here's our formula. It's I minus Q, and then we take the inverse of that matrix, and then basically we just sum all the rows, right? So that's that's what this um, this vector of ones is doing when we when we take that product. So for this example, remember Q is just 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0, 0 0.5. So that's what this is here. And then identity matrix is just the matrix with ones along the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Um, here we want it to have the same dimensions as Q. So Q is a two by two matrix. So we want I of two, right? Which is going to be this matrix right here. Um, and then we're going to multiply that by also the ones we want that to be of dimension two as well. Um, so we multiply that out and we get four, two, which means that the expected number of steps from the start is four and the expected number of steps from the H state is two. So we didn't actually get this before. Um, or I guess we did get it as like a consequence of the way that we solved the equations, but um, it's nice to have it all here and we don't need to solve any equations for this. So why does this formula work? We'll get to that in another video because um, this video is already reasonably long and I don't want to go too much in depth because it'll scare people. Um, but for now, just like look at this formula. It works pretty well. Um, yeah. And so in summary, Let's go over the main points again. So not all the sequences of coin flips have the same time until they're seen, right? So we saw HT and TT did not have the same expected number of steps before we saw them. Secondly, we can intuitively see this when we construct a state machine for the series of flip results. So remember our state machines for HT and TT, we were able to look at that and say, okay, yes, it makes sense that TT is, you know, it takes longer for us to see that because we can lose our progress more easily, right? We go back to the start state if we don't see two t's in a row. Um, then to find the exact number of flips, we can solve a system of linear equations. We saw that, we did it, we did the work, um, it worked, but that was a lot of work. So we saw that also alternatively, we could use a state machine to create a transition matrix and then use a formula I minus Q inverse, and then, you know, sum those rows on that matrix by multiplying by the one vector on that matrix to give us the expected steps from every transient state to the absorbing state. So I'll go into more depth on why the math works and also something interesting, how to generate the state machines without manual work, since that is something that requires a reasonable amount of manual work um, in future videos. But for now, that's it. And I hope you enjoyed watching. Thanks.